Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the news today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool that will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, May 4th. I'm Jacob Cohen, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about Chegg. The homework help in sight saw its stock drop almost 50% on Tuesday. What happened and why does its CEO think it was all overblown? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, let's take a quick look at what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Let's get crack lacking. All right, first things first, today I in AI, Alphabet, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Anthropic are headed to the White House to discuss AI safeguards with the vice president, a role that hasn't been supplanted by AI just yet. Speaking of, IBM CEO Arvind Krishna said the company expects to slow or suspend hiring for back office jobs that AI could do there. Over a five-year period, Krishna estimated around 7,800 jobs there could be impacted. Meanwhile, on this topic, FTC Chair Lena Khan is out with an op-ed titled, We Must Regulate AI, Here's How, in which she promises to enforce antitrust and consumer protection laws in the emerging market. And while we're on the government side of things, the Biden administration also proposed a 30% tax on electricity used by crypto miners as volatile consumption can raise prices and cause service interruptions for neighbors. I guess the lesson here, crypto miners, they may be great people, but probably not the best neighbors. Moving along, the beginning of the end of the password is here, according to Google. Now unlocked is Google's long-awaited passkeys feature, which the company has been working on alongside Apple and Microsoft, and which it says are a more convenient and safer alternative to passwords and allow users to sign in by unlocking their computer or mobile device with their fingerprint, face recognition, or a local PIN. Passkeys, they said, help address the issue of, uh, you know, having to keep track of and remember lots of really annoying passwords, and they also reduce the possibility of successful phishing attempts. Very nice news there. Up next, Olive Garden owner Darden Restaurants is beefing up. With the Capitol Grill and Eddie V's already on its plate, Darden now wants an even bigger steak in, well, steak. Darden is buying Ruth's Chris Steakhouse with more than 150 locations and $860 million in 2022 sales for $715 million. Also, Johnson & Johnson's consumer health business, Kenview, is spinning off and going public today in what's expected to be the largest U.S. IPO since EV Mega Rivian went public in November 2021. Brands under the Kenview umbrella include some you maybe, probably, uh, definitely have heard of, including Tylenol, Band-Aid, Listerine, Aveeno, and Neutrogena. J&J announced the split in 2021 in a move to refocus on its pharma and medical device units, according to CNBC. And last year, Kenview Brands posted nearly $15 billion in sales. Ten of these brands had around $400 million or more each in sales. Wild. And last but not least, inflation news. The Federal Reserve raised rates again to a 16-year high, as widely expected, in its bid to slow inflation. However, It appeared to signal a potential pause in any future hikes. And with that, let's get to today's main story. Okay, so to set the stage here, I want to start with the CNBC headline from Tuesday about Chegg, the online homework help tutoring company, which if you're a college student in the U.S., you probably splurged on to get answers for some coursework more than once. And the headline goes like this. Chegg shares drop more than 40% after the company says ChatGPT is killing its business. Now, part of that headline was obviously true. Chegg shares did close down nearly 50% actually on Tuesday, which is not great, you could say. The other part, though, that ChatGPT is killing Chegg's business, well, 
that's much less clear. Check reported a 7% dip in revenue in the first quarter to about $188 million, and subscriber numbers dropped 5% to $5.1 million, which doesn't sound great, but it was actually a better than expected earnings and revenue for the quarter. Still, following the results, one Morgan Stanley analyst chopped his price target for the stock from $18 to $12, and Wall Street firm Jefferies cut their target to $11 from $25. And their reason? Well, for both, they cited the threat of AI and ChatGPT that was mentioned by Chegg CEO during its earnings call. But here's where things get really interesting. So Chegg CEO Dan Rosenzweig started that earnings call with investors saying, in the first part of the year, we saw no noticeable impact from ChatGPT on our new account growth. However, since March, we saw a significant spike in student interest in ChatGPT, and we now believe it's having an impact on our new customer growth. And investors obviously do not like to hear that. Now, remember that CNBC headline saying that ChatGPT is killing Chegg's business? Well, that's definitely not how Rosenzweig describes it. At Chegg, he said the company's embracing OpenAI's technology aggressively and immediately. He added he even met with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman to discuss the future of AI in education and how to integrate AI into Chegg services. He said they're still bringing in millions of new customers, just not at the level they expected or wanted. And twice he added that this is not a sky falling kind of thing. This is just, he said, a company has been around for a long time with management that's been around through every economic cycle since 1987 and every launch of technology cycle since the PC reacting to a technological shift. So how exactly is Chegg reacting to this shift? Well, soon they'll be releasing something called Chegmate, which you can think of as Chegg's ChatGPT. It's basically like ChatGPT, uses the same technology as ChatGPT, GPT-4, but it's programmed using all of the billions of data points, coursework, tutoring, and homework questions ever answered, solved, and communicated across Chegg's platform. And it'll probably be a really good personal tutor that can generate questions for you, explain things to you, help you solve problems. You know, stepping back, later on, Rosenzweig went on CNBC saying the drop in the stock was completely overblown. And the stock actually rebounded some yesterday, though it's still down significantly from where it was just a week ago. And big picture, I think it's hard to argue against Chegg's AI product being a really great educational product. You know, if Chegg thinks there's a market of 100 million students out there, 8.1 million of which it says currently subscribe to its services, so has a huge opportunity remaining. The question is, is or will a free chat GPT be just good enough for students? Or will the proprietary data and utility behind Chegg's GPT-powered Chegmate be useful enough that students will actually pay for it in the future. And I guess we might just find out a bit more once school starts this fall. All right, and bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show, our proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have a terrific Thursday. Get out of here. See you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day, JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win a lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, 
We want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.